Hello there. Top global grain suppliers have seen record profits during the Russia-Ukraine war, and there are now calls to impose energy company-style windfall taxes on them. Hunger is rising across the world as grain prices increase, and also as the big companies at the centre of the grain trade claw in near record revenues and profit. And get this, there are only four companies, collectively known as ABCD, three in the US and one in France, that have controlled up to 90% of the world's grain trade in things like wheat, barley and rice, for decades. One of these firms saw a 23% increase in revenues to a record 140 billion quid. And it is also the largest privately owned corporation in the US in terms of revenue. While another reported record profits in the second quarter of 2022. And The Guardian is reporting that Companies at the centre of the global grain trade have enjoyed a record bonanza amid soaring food prices around the world, raising concerns of profiteering and speculation in global food markets that could put staples beyond the reach of the poorest and prompting calls for a windfall tax. And it says that those experiencing acute food insecurity have increased from 135 million pre-pandemic to 345 million people. And the report quotes Olivier de Schutter, a co-chair of IPES Food and UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, as saying, The fact that global commodity giants are making record profits at a time when hunger is rising is clearly unjust, and is a terrible indictment of our food systems. What's even worse, these companies could have done more to prevent the hunger crisis in the first place. So we have to understand that the grain market is very concentrated in a few people's hands, and according to the Guardian piece, extremely opaque. It looks like there are no constraints on how much grain they can hold back if they wanted to force the prices up, and that grain gets traded on the stock markets. So there are a lot of people in the food chain that could, and I say could, be profiting handsomely at the expense of starving millions. But on the other side of the coin, with this sort of setup, there will be economies of scale and expertise, potentially forcing prices down. So breaking them up to force more competition might push prices up. Anyway, with prices worldwide increasing, even countries such as the UK, that are just about self-sufficient in wheat, for example, will be forced to follow those global prices. But at what point do you apply any windfall tax and share it out on a global scale in a fair and equitable manner? Then there's Russia and Ukraine, both big grain exporters. So trying to cap the price of grain probably won't work, as Putin would be unlikely to play ball and it would punish Ukraine if it were forced to do so. And capping the price of the end product like bread to the consumer would kill off many businesses, just like capping the domestic price of energy did when all those energy retailers went bust. But remember, if grain is not finding its way onto the international markets, then where is it going? Now, some of it will have been destroyed in Ukraine, but some will be stored, and if that is released onto the market later, it might force the price down, if it's allowed to be re released. And as I understand it, although I could well be wrong, grain can be stored for up to 18 months in a silo or for many years in special containers although some chap called Joseph did manage to store it for seven years in Egypt. Pity that we opted for the more risky just-in-time supply chains, because for many it will probably prove to be a case of just too late. <laughs>